Hey guys, Jack and Pat back from Mercedes-Benz Burlington. There goes Mercedes-Benz Burlington right now as we speak. One of my favorite sights to see every Jack. day. Jack, I look good right now, don't I? Oh yeah, you do. <laughs> you love the G-Wagon, uh, The G-Wagon is, is my yours. car, man. This is the car. It makes no sense. It has <laughs> way too much capability. Yep. It is very expensive, but cool. Yes. It is at a 90 degree angle. Yep. And it <laughs> is the best car we sell. It is, it is I highest demand. Car. Highest demand yeah, car. Demand. I love this car. This car is like, a, it's like almost a story. The S-Class is kind of the, the history of Mercedes, but to me, the G-Wagon is the story of Mercedes-Benz. Of like, this is going all the way back to the military times. And to this day, they've rebranded it more successful than any other company, I'd argue, um, in terms of changing something from something super utility to something ultra luxurious. So funny enough, the Canadian military still uses a something like a G-Wagon yeah and bare bones you know doesn't have the heat of seats like we do with an F and everything else but that goes to show for the past 20, 30, 40 years on what the G-Wagon is all about right I'm glad you mentioned that I think it is 40 years four it is 40 decades. years that's right wow that's, four decades and the car. shape of the G-Wagon has been relatively the same hasn't it pretty well yeah, yeah. They, they're, they're very slow to update things on the G-Wagon but Nothing that's by that. design that, that's, that's by design. design. Yep, you're right. Um, it's funny. I was talking to a client the other day who just picked one up. You know, they can get pretty expensive. Um, and this one was a custom order that was a pretty unique spec. And it was funny. He said, I've never spent six figures on a vehicle <laughs> that doesn't have keyless entry. <laughs> <Yes. That's, laughs> right? So, because it still has that, that utility feel. You still got the handles where you have to do... One of the best things about the G-Wagon that people love is that loud click when you lock yep. it, that loud click when you unlock it. But that comes with no keyless entry. No, no. And, and a lot of people don't know this. I see a lot of people try to pull the handle. There's actually a little button that you have to press to open the door. That's right. And it's a loud click too. It is very loud click. And when you close it, which I'm sure we'll have in a video later, it sounds like a bank vault. I saw a YouTube short the other day of um, somebody saying, you know you're new at, uh, a reason you know you're a new G-Wagon driver is you close the door and it doesn't close properly because yeah. you gotta really <laughs> you slam gotta, it. You slam it. <laughs> oh man, I love this car. These cars, I can't even call them cars, they're like trucks, trucks. SUVs. Yeah. Um, they're just so unique. There's such an allure to them. And you know, different people have different opinions of them. Some people mm -hmm. think, you know, um, it's only like wealthier people that drive them. It's only women that drive them. It's only men that drive them. But you know, you can speak from firsthand mm -hmm. um, and myself um, that all types of people drive these cars, new, pre-owned, uh, two years old, 20 yep. years old, yep. brand new custom order. There's all sorts of people that color them uh, custom order them with colors like blue, greens, other people that just want something more classic, you know, matte black with the red interior with the black. There's all sorts of configurations. It's actually funny because in Canada, a lot of people spec them the same, but it's actually one of the most um, customizable vehicles we sell. It is in terms of the interior, uh, exterior, you could do diamond stitch, you could do uh, red stitch, you could do white inserts, there's suede, no suede, and same with the steering wheels. You can literally pick and choose exactly the way you want it. And when I say exactly, I mean exactly. Yeah, I. Oh, it's just, these are something special. There's all these cool videos of the capability. Have you ever done any of the G-Class Drive courses? I have experienced it online. <laughs> <laughs> So, well, okay, you have something in common with uh, everybody watching yeah. the video then. Oh, yeah. Um, it is cool to see what these cars can do. They'll never, you know, most of them will never do that, especially working at Mercedes Benz Burlington. There's, uh, you know, the closest mount we have is probably like, I don't know, the garbage dump in Bray Bend's old garbage dump in Mississauga. I know. <laughs> or I'm, going up the mountain. I don't think going up Yeah, I have the mountain. <laughs> that's probably the most capable. Yeah, you're right. That, that most that's probably, yes. Yeah, that's the only thing called mountain in the area. Yeah. Um, but they can literally almost go up a 90 degree angle. You know, oh yeah, that, that's like most cars can't do anything close to that, right? So it's very interesting to see the types of things. And on that course, they take you through huge bumps, sand, mm -hmm. dirt, mud, up a mountain, down a mountain. Um, it's it's very interesting to see the different types of controls we even have in the center yep. of how how versatile you can make this vehicle if you want it to. What I like about it is, you know, a lot of clients when they go out off roading if they want to, yep. right, and and they can is like I said, you are still having the heated seats, the cool seats, you have your AC, you have everything that an off-roading vehicle can can do, yep. but you also have the luxury of it. And I think I keep saying this over and over again, but it's that to me is awesome because most models that I've seen from say other brands, 
They say, here's your vehicle, here's off-roading, but it's bare bones. That's There's nothing right. wrong with that. It's just, it's just what they do, and we do with luxury and off-road capability the best. Well, you know, it's funny. It's because, you know, we've been doing that for probably at least 10 years with the G-Wagon specifically, mm -hmm. but you'll see a lot of brands are just starting to do that now. Yes. A lot of... Um, uh, pickup truck companies, uh, just to name a few, yep. are really doing that now. Where you can get a bare bones truck if you're, you know, going on to site with it. But a lot of pickup trucks are offering a full crew cab, heated cooling seats, a nice big tablet in the center, and that's because a lot of people want that utility or need it for work, mm -hmm. but they want a luxury car on the weekend when they have their kids in the car, their dog in the car, they're going on to the beach, they're going on a weekend trip. They still want something that's really comfortable and feels like a high end uh, luxury SUV, but they need that truck bed. So that's what we've been doing in the G-Wagon for a long time because it feels like an ultra luxury vehicle. All of the touch points, all the leathers, all the finishes we use are very high end, but the outside, it really looks rugged, um, which is why I love it so much. Going back to the history, it's very interesting that, you know, you know, people probably were a little bit more on edge when they first started driving these Gs. Now I'm driving it around like, I'm on Lakeshore, here comes the golf course, this is a beautiful afternoon. Uh, all walks of life, I've been driving the g wagons for years and years, but uh, yeah, I quite do, like it. Do you, if you see a G-Wagon, mm -hmm. let's just say that's 20 years old, 30 years old, do you think you could tell the difference? Personally, I can, just, you know, being a bit of a nerd with that stuff, I can yeah. probably tell you the difference between, you know, a model year 19 and 20 on a lot of different brands, not even just Mercedes, yeah. but, you know, for the general public, I'd say there's some, there's some big decade facelifts um, and redesigns that are tells, but other than that, not really. This was redesigned in 2019. This is a 2023 we're driving now. Yep. I'd say from you know 19 to 23, there hasn't been a lot of stuff to write home about, but people want it like that, right? People want um, people want it to be very similar to how it used to be. They don't want a lot of big changes on the G. Uh, I think that's why G wagon clients like the G wagon is because you know how people like the latest and greatest. Yeah. I think they're a little bit of the opposite, right? They said, "Oh, I know this look. I like the heritage behind it. I want to drive what I'm familiar with." Well, you know, as good and bad as it is, you know, they've become a bit of a status symbol. But the reason they are like that is they're very unique and you can tell, mm -hmm. right? So, you know, if you make them too rounded and too much like every other SUV, yeah, they're nice SUVs. But, you know, a lot of um, other brands have kind of had an identity crisis when they've tried to change too much on the yep. cars to make them modern, which is nice. But then, you know, yeah, they're the same as everything else. When you can't tell different luxury SUVs apart, you know, they lose some of that, some of that extra, yeah. you know that extra sparkle that the G-Wagon still offers. And they've slowly updated certain things, but they've really kept all of the creature comforts and all of the framework the same. Now, I don't want to say who, but there's another brand that had similar story as the G. Okay. Military history. Yeah. Came into the market. Okay. okay. I think I know as, where you're as going a, As it. a luxury type of, you know, yeah. type of thing. And then it went away. Okay. The G-Wagon stuck around, Okay. but now they came out with an electric version of this other manufacturer. Okay. So my question to you is, what do you think Mercedes will do in the future? Do you think they'll go the same way of this other brand and make this electric? I'm not going to lie. I thought you were talking about one brand. Then as you kept talking, I thought you were talking about another one. And then finally, I figured out which one you were talking about. You finally figured out which one? Yeah. Um, but uh, similar to them, I think we will. I actually know we will do an electric G. They've announced the EQG. But would, um, that, would that be the only that's where i'm going i don't know i don't think yeah. i don't think they can it's got it's getting mixed reviews because you've got a lot of people that hey they want the style and the luxury of the g which yeah. is kind of what we were just speaking about but they're okay with it going electric they don't care about the drive platform mm -hmm. um but then you've got a lot of other people that want you know the rumble i've slowly changed over i do love the luxury and the um kind of the futuristic technology that's in the electrics yeah i was very slow to like that Me originally too. i was like ah, i don't know i still like the gas and i still like hearing a nice sound and an engine note and an exhaust note but in an suv you know i think naturally they'll go that way even like this you can still hear like Ooh. in a in a rumbling town tunnel I missed that tunnel. <laughs> I think that was gonna, awesome. That was see. I think we're gonna have to recall that the woo tunnel because every time we go through there. We're <laughs> see, I think that's where for me, as a little bit of traditionalist, you know, it's it's nice hearing the engine, the exhaust. Yeah. But I am excited for the future because yeah. when I drove the EQS, you know, we drove the EQBs we had around town. I was very surprised by the acceleration and how capable it was yeah you weren't limited and they change they change the platform to be you know 
um, exciting for the driver as well. So in some of our EQ AMG product, you know, you still feel excited about the about the brand, right? So I think right now, to your point, I think the electric G would be a nice addition to the lineup that's already the G550 yes. and the G63. Yep. But over time, let's say everything does go electric, would you rather have a G-Wagon style vehicle like this that's electric or nothing at all? I would take- Oh, I take an know, electric G-Wagon, yeah, So I think the platform is there and I think Mercedes is ahead of its time in that scent of like, we've always been pushing the envelope. So for them to not already be researching how to make an electric G-Wagon would be almost crazier than making an electric yep. G-Wagon. Well, I'll tell you guys what, as soon as we have more information on the EQG, we're gonna post the videos, uh, um, also highlighting the packages, whatever we can find. Yeah, let's review on, that certainly. Absolutely. Yeah, we, uh, we should have some information on that soon, actually. I think a lot of people are just kind of, like you said, they're, they're unaware of what is gonna happen to it. And, yeah. and Mercedes, you know, I know they're gonna do it right. So hopefully once we get that information, we'll pass it along to you guys. Well, it's interesting, you know, how fast we move, right? And, you know, if you asked me a year and a half ago how fast electric would be moving, I'd say, oh, it's coming, but not that quickly. And we've introduced, Mercedes alone, we've introduced uh, six models to the lineup. And that doesn't include different um, variants of the model. For That's example, right. the EQE um, sedan also comes in an AMG. Let's uh, pull over and take a look at the uh, spec of this 2023 uh, G63. Awesome. Hope you guys had fun with us. It was a pleasure driving the G-Wagon. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Yeah, you know, this car, this G-Wagon, this G63 Jack, it's, it's an off-road beauty. It goes yep. up and down mountains. You can take it anywhere. So oh, yeah. why not just drive it on a regular road and, you know, watch the water? What a view, eh?